Howdy there folks, this is Murray with 3 Bardi Videos and what we have here is a non-restricted Keltec Su-16 Tactical and what we also have is a really good example of a problem that occasionally comes up with these rifles. Not very good, eh? So, for those of you who are familiar with what the Su-16s are, you will know that there is um, that the receivers for these firearms are almost entirely made of some sort of polymer. So yeah, they're basically a plastic gun for the most part. And uh, a problem that comes up with that is the fact that occasionally these rifles will have uh, the rear of their receivers crack or completely blow out from the force of the action uh, traveling back too far and impacting the rear of the receiver. So as you can clearly see, that's what's happened here. Uh, this is a buddy of mine's uh, Su-16 Tactical that I was just borrowing, borrowing from and I had it out the range just a few weeks ago and was shooting off a bench at around 500 yards with it. I just seeing what it could do and after shooting the target and unloading a 10 round magazine I stood up to kind of examine the firearm and that's when I looked down and noticed that there was a, a crack running across the back of the, the receiver here. Uh, of course when this occurred, well I have no idea when it occurred to be honest because it was, it was a totally non-violent event when it happened. There was no, no parts flew out or anything catastrophic happened. It, for all I know it could have, it could have been cracked and I could have been shooting it with, I, it could have happened like after the second round I fired and I shot eight rounds through it afterwards, I don't know. So it was totally non-violent. I was wearing my safety glasses of course when it did happen. But yeah, so I stood up and I, I noticed this crack and because I'm quite familiar with these rifles on, and their reviews online and what other people say about them, I, I was already aware of this issue that the, the rear of these receivers tend to break uh, because of whatever the reason is. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But uh, so I of course stopped shooting the rifle and just put it away for the day and said, well, I guess that's, that just happened. And um, yeah, thankfully, uh, the Caltech does have a limited lifetime warranty that comes with all their products. Uh, however, that warranty only is covered or only applies for the original owners of the firearm. So I am the original owner of this firearm. I, I bought it for my buddy because of uh, financial things at the time and then I sold it to him. But uh, it is technically uh, like I'm the original owner of it so that's why I am able to ship it off and and get the warranty for it. So I, I contacted the warranty place here in Canada for it, or at least one of them, and uh, they totally told me that they were good about it and told me to, yeah, send in your rifle with the original receipt and, and whatnot, and we'll we'll look at it, and then we'll, we'll send you uh, the, the proper part to replace this. So it sounds like, according to them, what they're gonna do is um, they're gonna just send me an updated upper, because the, the barrel and all this stuff is kind of, well, not the action, but the, the barrel is probably, I'm not sure how it's attached to a plastic receiver, but it sounds like they're gonna just send me a, a new upper. So I presume there's gonna be a barrel attached to it and all that stuff. Basically this, what you see, what pivots on the top here is gonna go. And I'm not gonna get it back. I'm gonna get a new, a fully new assembly. Is what I'm predicting. So we'll see how that works. Um, but before I ship that, this gun off, I just wanted to cover this because uh, Kind of a rare unless you own a su-16 and you've had this happen to you it's kind of you don't get a really good glimpse or in-depth look at how this how this happens it's, it's well documented on the internet but it's more just people commenting that yeah my su-16 broke as well you know kind of deal uh there isn't i don't think there's too many uh, good examples or videos of really looking at how this happens so that's what we're going to do here we're going to examine it so here's a better close-up of the damage uh, as you can clearly see, it cracked right around the outside edges of this, this back plate or piece. Of course, this was one giant molded piece, and uh, that, this is just the weak spot, spot, I guess, where it busted. And here's the interesting part. I'm going to cycle the action all the way back, and you can see the way the gun is right now, that uh, the rear of the bolt carrier group uh, comes extremely close to touching what would have been the front face of the inside face of this piece. And I'm wondering if that's how the gun always was 
or if that's somehow the guns become like that now and that's the reason why that busted. That's kind of what I want to examine this for is just to figure out why did it break? Because, I mean, it lasted, this gun has around 800 rounds through it and all of which has been Remington uh, 223 UMC ammo. So, you know, just the 55 grain uh, manufactured run of the 223 ammo that you can buy, the bucket of bullets and all that stuff. Uh, that's all this gun has seen. So there's been no reloads or any hot ammo put through this thing. It's just been that ammo. And it, it lasted 800 rounds and it's been an excellent firearm throughout those 800 rounds, like no jams really. The only time I had a problem with it is one time one of the springs in the trigger group assembly came loose. And that was simply because of the way I put it together. I didn't put it together right. But other than that, this gun's been 100% just fantastic. A fantastic shooter until this catastrophic failure happened. Well, not catastrophic, but well, I'm a pretty critical failure, but not catastrophic in the sense of safety. But uh, yeah. So it's been a great gun and it ran great until boom, this happened. And what I want to figure out, it's, it's great that it has a warranty and they're going to send the replacement part for it. But I mean, what's the point in having a warranty and having this part replaced if it's going to do it after another 800 rounds? What I want to see or do is figure out why this happened and see if Caltech has come up with a solution or if there's any way this, this updated upper that they're sending me is somehow that update is a way that Caltech has addressed this so it's not going to happen again that's what I'm hoping for Ooh, so but as you can see as the gun is right now it looks like the bolt carrier group if it's it can actually travel far enough back to impact the inside face of that rear piece and that's probably that's ultimately what broke it now one thing I will note that happened at the range when I was shooting it is, let me adjust the camera when I got up at the bench and examined the firearm after shooting that 500 yards uh, I noticed basically the rear of the gun looked very similar to this as I have it manipulated right now okay not that bad <laughs> about oh. there you go pretty much like that so here's the big kicker is I did notice that this takedown pin was like this it had somehow while I was firing of course I had my hand down here so there was nothing there to stop this from just slowly working its way out and this is something I've noticed has come up with this firearm there's that this this is a captive pin but it really doesn't stay in place that well it's kind of a design defect on Caltech's part but this had slowly under after all the firing and not checking it, it had just done that, worked its way completely out, which I think in turn let this, this lower and upper sl slightly separate like you see it now. And I'm wondering if um, this rear end of the, the receiver butts up uh, rather tightly to the back of, to the inside of this lower receiver. And I'm wondering if this added strength of the lower is one of the big design features that keeps the rear of this from busting out. So if that's, I'll be interested to, to kind of know or find out in the future if that's what caused this, is that by having this takedown pin work its way out and not realizing it, the upper and lower separated slightly and that allowed the rear of this receiver to not be supported properly and in turn, the impact of the rear of the action hitting it busted it out. I'm not sure if that's what did it or not but that is an option. So in that case, if I get the new one back, the new upper, um, what I'll probably end up doing is figuring out a way to cap to, like keep this pin from ever coming out uh, on its own. So I might thread the end of it and put a little bolt head in it so it doesn't, basically you have to undo it, like take out that bolt to make it slide out. Or maybe I'll just be really barbaric, do it the Soviet Russia way and like just wrap a electrical tape around this so it doesn't come out. Who knows, I'll figure out, figure out some way to keep it from happening. That's an option that I've looked at as to why this might have happened. Another thing I've noticed is this right here. Uh, as far as I could tell, one thing that dictates how far back this action could travel is the charging handle itself. It seems to, uh, if it seems to, right when it reaches, the action reaches the end of the receiver, 
this charging handle seems to get really close to touching this right here. So I was wondering if, I don't remember it looking like this before. Uh, so what I was thinking is maybe there's a chance that this material used to be flush like this. And over the, over the hundreds of rounds fired for this thing, I haven't been noticing it, but this material has just slowly been beat, it's just been slowly beaten away until it's reached this far back. And once it reaches this far back, it allows, it finally allows the action to impact the rear of the receiver, thus breaking it. So I'm wondering if th that's an option too, if that's a sign that this is, I can't remember if this is what it looked like originally or not, but if this is a sign that, I mean, originally when I bought the gun, the, the action would recoil back until the charging handle hit right here on the plastic, and then that would stop it and it wouldn't impact the receiver. I'm not sure. So if that does appear to be the issue and the reason why these receivers are breaking is simply because this action is cycling too hard, uh, a number of ways I could see Caltech uh, fixing this issue is one, simply uh, finding a way to increase the spring intensity of the action spring in this tube. Um, and then another way I could see them doing it is possibly putting some sort of stopper in here so that the, the mechanism in the tube is only able to travel so far before it hits that stopper, which would allow the action to only go back so far in the receiver. That could solve the issue, as well as possibly decreasing the size of the gas port in the barrel or even in the, the gas block itself. So basically the gun wouldn't get as much gas to cycle with. So there's a number of ways I could see them improving this. And I really hope that with this, when I send this gun off and get the updated upper, I really hope uh, somehow Caltech has improved on this issue, like made it so, uh, you know, this won't, this won't be a reoccurring thing because the way it stands right now, the, the Su-16 has held up really good other than that one crack in the back of the receiver. Like all the rest of the plastic, the scope mount, and uh, the buttons and just everything on the, the stock, everything's held up really great on this gun. There's no damage around the breech area here like the plastic seems. Just the way it was uh, when, it, when it came out of the box from the factory. Like uh, the, you can really see if these rifles that if they engineer them right, or have the design right. The, the plastic is a viable pla like material for these firearms. Like, there's if they can sort out this one issue of the crack receiver, I, I can really see no reason why this gun wouldn't last thousands of rounds. So I'm really looking forward to uh, when I get that upper back. I'll throw the gun together and I'll start shooting it once again. And later on the summer, I will upload a three bar D's, a three bar D video review of this firearm. And hopefully I'll get Laughing Man in there too, because he is kind of the owner of this firearm as it is right now, and he's got a lot of trigger time with it. So I'll hopefully get his opinion as well as mine on the rifle for that review. And yeah, so look forward to that. In the meantime, I guess, uh, take care and thanks for watching. Oh dear. Here it goes. Slugs, two and three quarter inch. Oh. Oh, it might not have picked up a round. Now it did. Good job. I didn't flinch. That's good. Oh.